This video is proudly brought to you by WhatIsZS.com ZS is coming soon. Okay, everybody, I have to make a brief announcement. For some unknown reason, WhatIsZS.com is not showing up on the net. Someone has informed me about it. We do apologize for the problem with it. It will be back and up and running within the week, and I do apologize for it, everybody. Um, we, are, we do not know what has happened. We cannot contact Wix until Monday morning, so we do apologize. So um, what I'm here to do today is show you in regard to the um, injection molding process a little bit more, so I'm going to jump over to it. Now, what happened is I was watching some videos on uh, things and everything like that, and um, I just wanted to see the filament process that you guys were using and everything like that, and I'm watching this bloke, and um, I'm looking at all the errors in his extrusion and all the metal and everything like that, and I thought, shite. And then I heard him say, water bath, once I put the water bath in. Okay, now that water bath, if he puts a water bath on that filament now, he's ruined it. That filament is no good. You would have to run it through a special drying machine, which is going to cost you a hell of a lot more money to make than that extruder. You're better off leaving the extruder, right, at the stage of this but the problem is this is the wrong drill the these type of drills are the wrong drill and that's pretty much what he's using but he's using a wood version of the drill right that is the wrong type of drill I'll actually get it up for you um, so just bear with me um, Now, okay, now see these images here? This is the type of drill you want in your homemade extruder. Preferably in stainless steel or one very polished that's got no metal flakes on it. Um, yeah, you want it as clean as possible before you use it. You can use something like this. But, yeah, you're losing space at manoeuvre or of the stuff, but you truly want something more, more like, and so on and so on, I'm on bloody eBay. Okay, I didn't mean to click on that. You need something more like that or like these N1s here, that N1 there that's got a thing, you can use something like that. Not like this, okay? That is okay to a certain extent. But you're going to get crunching as the pellets go in. He had crunching in his video, and that was the pellets breaking on the metal, chipping off metal, and trust me, plastic can break metal. Yes, it can. It does it all the time in the plastics industry. How did we overcome that? We use a different type of screw. right? We use screws more like these ones here not like that one avoid these type altogether right avoid this if you can go to this style of any on any one of those ones that i'm going over now they are the type of drill bit you want to be using in your makeshift thing do not use these modern type of drills use the old fashioned ones use the old-fashioned ones guys they're going to allow the, the pellets or whatever you're putting into the extruder that you're making the filament extruder you're making it's going to allow them to come in a lot better right and you're going to want that you want that to go in but clean those drill bits up as clean as you can and trust me, sometimes you've got to go backwards in technology to advance in technology. Now, but the good thing about injection molding, um, I'll get some injection molding images up for you.
But see, he also made a different problem as well. Now, notice on the end of it, it's got a barrel. Right? Shave your end down there. But look at the screw. It's more like, fair enough, it's got a thicker end on it and everything like that. And it's not as thin and it's only allowing a certain amount of plastic to go through it. But for what you're doing, yes, you've got the right concept, but the wrong drill bit. You're better off using the ones that I just showed you. Every injection molding machine has that type of screw, right? And when they're taking a sample of the heat, they're not taking a sample of the heat here. They're taking a sample of the heat up here. Right? You don't want the sample close to where you're injecting it. Right? It's sort of, you can see that all the different things are now in an injection molding machine. The only difference between an injection molding machine and a 3D printing extruder that you guys are making is. Where are we? No, I had one there earlier. Oh, I think I killed it. Ah, yeah. Okay, so, um, but, yeah, you need a different type of screw. So you've got to turn around and you've got to change that. Injection molding, so we're going to change that to extruding machines. Extruding. Oh, no, we've got machines up there, so we don't need that. Extruding machines. All right, now, the thing is, you'll see that they've got a similar screw. But notice the only difference with the machine, they've got a long, some have got longer heaters, yes. Um, but the only difference is there's no injector at the bottom. But notice this gizmo here that's on the thing. That's not just a hopper. It's called a hopper dryer, right? It dries the plastic got wind going through it and it's drying the plastic sometimes the hopper dryer is away from it and the plastic is brought over by tube in a blown tube but the only difference with an extruder to an injection molder is simply the fact that there's no mold at the end there's a die that's the only difference with it there's a die at the end and um, so we come back to this, okay? So you've got all the heaters there. So if you've got all the different heaters, right, you want it closest to the closest heater. So if your closest heater is back there. Now, but with filament, okay, you're making filament. You've got to work out the exact spot to put your thing because you're going to have to do tests, numerous tests, because you want that filament to come out nice, hard, and almost done. You don't want it sloppy like a 3D printer, right? It's sort of because on the end of this extruder, it's going through a die. Notice how there's no, it starts there. So there's heats when it's going through the die, but once it gets up to the bit where it's coming out, there's no heater. Why? Because it allows that plastic to start cooling down and it will still mold as it's going down, there's no problems. It's sort of, but as it's passing through the end, you don't want it sloppy plastic. You want it an extrudable plastic. Now, if you use this type of screw, right, you're going to be a lot better off. And I'm going to go back to those drill bits. Right, I'm going to show you the better one of the lot. The better one of the lot are these type there, those ones. So you can use those ones, or you can use those ones. You can use these ones here. They can be used, but not those big, thick, wide ones. Their, their turnability of the plastic isn't good. Um, you want a nice, slow, even thing. You want enough room for your plastic to drop into the extruder, okay? And you will find the right drill bit eventually. And it's going to take a bit of experimentation to do it. But you need to give that little bit of time. You don't put your thermostat at the end of the extruder. You put the thermostat at the end of the extruder. You are going to have hot, runny plastic every single time. Every single time. You need to give it a small chance of cooling down a tiny little bit. 
it's still going to retain a lot of the heat. So you're going to have to play with that heat sensor along your tube. But look guys, swap straight over to one of these type of drill bits. You're going to be a lot more satisfied having one of these type of drill bits because these are more like a proper extruding object. Okay, you're extruding with the right type of extruding bit. And that's what you want. You want the right type of extruding bit. Well, you say, okay, well, it's got a smaller hole at the back. It's not the same size as the drill bit. Well, put a cap at the other end and put the drill bit into that cap before you put the other end on it. And then you actually have a sealed unit exactly like we have in the big machines. Exactly. And it'll be no different because that's what we have. We had that little extruder bit down the back that pretty much, okay, in the wrong one, and I've lost it now. Okay, uh, I'm just going to find it. So we down here at the back, notice how we've got that little bit, yeah, and there's a cap there that holds the drill. See, we've got the exact same thing. We've got a little thin shaft that comes into the turner. That's, that screw is removable. Right? We've got to be able to remove it because they break all the time. Plastic breaks steel. Trust me, it does. It's cost me a lot of money over the years, plastic. It's cost me, a, I've had to replace God knows how many screws. And, um, but the thing is, when you're extruding it and everything like that, but you look at that screw. It's exactly like one of those wooden drill bits. But you guys are using modern technology. You guys are trying to use this type of drill bit, wrong type of drill bit, straight away. This is why he's getting metal, in his, he's getting metal and filament, right? One, is using a new drill bit, which is the worst idea you can do. You're better off having a clean drill up thing, but that is the wrong, that is the wrong filament um, extruder altogether. Now, see how the plastic is drooping. And as I said, the reason it's drooping is because he has got that sensor too close, too close to the end. It needs to be down here. That filament needs that tiny little bit to actually cool down, just a tiny bit. But so you move it back and you will eventually, you're going to have to run a few tests, guys. Yes, but also create a hopper dryer. You need a hopper dryer that's going to blow the plastic around in the dryer and it's got to blow it around. It needs to be moving when it's blowing around. So you need to create a cyclone in that hopper dryer before it's fed into here. You can make a, a cyclone dryer out of a um, 20 litre or whatever gallon you call them, 20 litre paint drum right steel paint drum and you stick a, um, a blower hose into it and you just blow and you pump hot air into it at 40 degrees that will dry the plastic out and you can leave it in there at 40 degrees as long as it's moving around now for him he's going to then go and use a water bath he's going to put a water bath see he he has a bit of idea about rehydration of plastic he's read the mdf but the problem is he is making plastic that's going to be extruded. You can't rehydrate plastic in this stage. So if you're making filament for you, your printer, don't water bath it. You'll have nothing but trouble. Okay? Keep it like that. That's perfect. Okay, yes, it's got metal filaments and everything like that. But PLA or any plastic coming out of an extruder being made to be re-extruded is best left alone. Do not water bath the plastic at this stage. You only water bath plastic after the final print because that you want to last, that you want to stay okay. But if you run that plastic through a water bath, you cannot use it to extrude with it. Now, if he turns around and gets a better pipe, and I recommend a nice, thick, stainless steel pipe. Why? Because it's cleaner, everything like that. Or you pretty much do nothing but run brushes down, clean it out, 
make sure there's nothing in that pipe whatsoever. But you're be eventually going to have rust. So you don't want rust. You'll find that a lot of extrusion pipes are stainless steel. Why? Because it doesn't rust and drop little bits of metal into your filament. And you don't want metal in your filament when you're extruding it again, because that's what a 3D printer is. But see, he's got this set at 3D printing, right? Because with 3D printing, you put the, the monitor, the heat at the very end of the extruder. You don't do that with this. The very end of your filament needs that time to cool down just that little bit. And it's going to take him time to move that thing up and down the shaft to find the right spot to get the right temperature. And eventually, he'll be extruding plastic as good. That design of his is not bad. It's actually quite good. That's quite a good little design for an extruder. It's, it's, but except the drill, he's got the wrong drill. He's got, actually got a good little hopper in it. I was actually quite surprised at the hopper. Uh, where is it? There we go. He's built a really nice little hopper, but you've got to make sure there's no way that that drill can touch that hopper, which I think it may be. Um, and he's got the wrong sort of uh, drill bit. So the drill bit that he's currently got, is it's clunking, and you can hear it clunking in the video. I'll put a link to his video in, in this description. But the thing is, when you watch it, you'll hear it going clunk, clunk, clunk. He says, oh, don't worry, that's just it crunching the plastic. Reason why it's crunching the plastic, because it doesn't have enough time to fall down the hole. And though that other style of screw works better for this type of operation. And because the simple fact he's using cold plastic, no, not warmed up because at 40 degrees plastic is malleable just and that's one of the reasons why you put it in a hopper dryer and it needs to be dehydrated before you extrude it the same way it needs to be before you extrude it through a 3d printer but if he water baths this at this stage wrong the only time you water bath your product is after you have made it into the shape that you permanently want it made. This is not a permanent thing. This is a temporary, how would you say, metamorphosis into the next stage of extrusion. And that's all it is. It's only a stage. So it's still got to remain dry and ready to extrude. And at the moment, it's been through an extruder. It doesn't need to be re-dried. If it, if it gets rolled straight away, it'll be okay. But he's got to move that temperature gauge down. So if you're making one of these, don't you, one, don't use a rusty pipe. You can tell he's using an old pipe. That's why he's got metal in his stuff. The drill's chopping everything off on the inside. He thinks the more he does it, the less he'll get. And guess what? No. The more you do it, the more you're going to get because you're using the wrong type of equipment, guys. Use stainless steel. You, it won't rust. You don't want rust in your product anyhow. Right? Use a different type of screw. Right? Use a different type of screw. You're going to have better um, amounts of the plastic going into the thing. That won't matter what so much size because a lot of you are going to be using recycled plastic pieces. You blend it up in a um, blender. Um, and I would even recommend running it through one of these first with a chopper at the end, chopping it into pellets, then using the pellets. But it's up to you. You can just go straight through and use recycled plastic, but it's going to need to go through your hopper dryer first at 40 degrees, right, with a tornado-like effect going through it. Go and have a look in an injection moulding factory. You want to learn how hopper dryer plastics work and everything like that. Go like an injection molding factory, say, look, I need to learn a little bit about extrusion. Do you mind if I just have a look? I'm a student. They'll let you have a look. They'll show you. They'll tell you. They're really good. I would. If you came into me as a student and said, oh man, look, please show me, I'd show you. Wouldn't even do it. I'm doing it now. I'm telling you. you your, your equipment design is almost there. You're using the wrong components using the wrong drill bit, 
you've got your heat sensor in the wrong spot, move your heat sensor back a bit and manipulate that until you start getting a firmer filament at the end of the extruder. Remember, you're not 3D printing downwards, you're pushing plastic out. So you want that to be the right temperature as it comes out. And you want your thing to be slightly bigger, not slightly smaller. If you have it slightly smaller, you're going to have a smaller gauge plastic. And if you're extruding it out at a more firmer state, you are going to get a much better operation of that plastic and it's going to be consistent. Most of these little devices that I've seen today are not consistent or wrong. Every single one of them. I haven't seen one using the right bit yet. And that means the drill bit. I haven't seen one single person use the right drill bit. I haven't seen one single person using the right metal. Um, everybody's using the concept of a metal drill. Do not use a metal drill. It's designed to cut metal. So if there's any metal and it's touching any metal, that's sharp enough to cut metal. Wood drills, blunt as buggery on the sides, guys. All they are for is to push out product. That's what you want. You want to push product. The way those wood drills are designed, they're not designed to cut anymore. They're designed wholly and solely to push product out. You want to push product in, so you want one of those wood-style drills. Simple. Okay, guys, look, I'm going to leave it with you now. I hope you've learned something from this. If you've got any problems or anything like that, put it, in the, put it into the comments and everything like that. You'll be very appreciative of it, trust me. You will be very appreciative of it. And jump along over to Patreon, sign up to Patreon. It only costs two bucks a month. Um, you can become a bigger supporter if you want. You'll get first access to all my videos. Yes, it's new. This channel that it is on is new. And yes, I am putting them on my, my main channel. But only until everybody signs up and everything like that. So I will put a few videos on there. But this is a video that everybody needs to see. Looking and learning how to make something, you need a bit of advice. Because I've seen everything that these videos out there showing you is wrong. Well, here is a plastics manufacturer of product telling you how to do it right. So why don't you go and do it right, guys, and actually use the right equipment to, to make your filament extruders. Now, I'll give, you some, I'll give you a tip. The size motor this guy has got, much better. It's a much better thing, right? Much better. Because he can step it slowly, it's got a lot of force because he's trying to push more product. He's got a, the right idea. But the only problem is he's got his hot end too hot. Um, he needs to move his sensor back so it's by that time. And it could take him four or five goes to get that sensor in the right spot to make a firmer plastic. You want it, you want it at the stage of cooling by the time it's going through that extruder. You don't want it hot. You want it cooling so that when it's coming out, it's already firm. Like, trust me, we've got a wind at the moment it comes out. We've got someone there, pretty much can almost touch it, pull it onto the coil winder and wind it. Yes, we're making thicker filament. We're making around about five to 10 mil. It's a thicker filament. And um, yes, we make thinner filaments, but not very often. But we haven't had a big order for a long while, so hence our machines are in hiatus. And, uh, but the thing is, like you guys are trying to make equipment that you can afford. You can afford to make this equipment better with a few extra dollars because every time you make one of these attempts, it costs you money. But if you go out and you buy that stainless steel pipe now, right, and you buy that stuff. Now, I'll give you an example, right? What you want to do is put your pipe and have your pipe on that thing and you have it so that the pipes are connected, fits nicely and you've got a lot more room at the top and the pipe pretty much, the bottom of the pipe is all that's really there and it's only there to keep it going. You can even leave a little bit of pipe at the top and 
so it's up to you on how you set that component up but I would set it up 100% different um, only because I know what is needed this guy is so close but so far away at the same time he's got some of the right equipment he's got some of the wrong ideas but the right ideas right he understands that plastic has to be rehydrated but not at this stage all this is is an interim stage you're remaking filament so you've got to keep it dry so do not put filament extrusion through a water bath you put it through a water bath it's no good for extrusion you're going to have failure after failure after failure you pull your filament out with one of these let it go out and he did have the right idea by using clear pellets right because he was able to see the the stuff in the thing and as you want to do the same thing your first tests should be done with a clear filament right and you need to hopper dry it first it definitely needs to be hopper dried first you need to have the wood style screw instead of the metal style, modern style screw. These are the wrong style of drill. They're designed for high speed. The old ones are designed to push a lot of product at a slow speed. Because you've got to remember, those drills were turned by hand and they had to move a lot of product. That's what an extruder is. The same as that old wood drill needs to go slow but needs to move a lot of stuff right so if you're making 1.75 i would recommend drilling that hole out slightly bigger um, only slightly and wait until it just extrude a little bit wait until it cools measure it okay that didn't work maybe i need to go a little bit bigger on the drill bit then drill it out again then try it again you might go through a few failures Right, there are calculations out there for every type of plastic, what type of hole that you need to have to extrude it to get that size filament. They are already done for you out there, trust me. We use them all the time. And um, I forget what the website is because that's on the work computer and I'm not at work. I'm at home at the moment. And work is temporarily shut down until the ZS is out on the market. And... Um, because we don't need to make the ZS at the moment because we've got plenty of stock, we can release it and then go back to work when we're making money. But move your heat sensors back a bit, guys. You wait until, you keep on moving that heat sensor back from the end until you know you are always getting a consistent solid filament at the end that is hard, not runny. You want it hard. You want it as if it's come out and dried so cooled down so fast it's beyond a joke because it's by the time it's coming through the filament that's how you want it so give that a try guys and gals and if you have any problems put them in the comments and i'll try and address those problems for you okay so i'm out of here and don't forget this is sponsored by what is zs.com zs is coming soon and we do apologize for the site being temporarily down. Thank you very much for joining us and we shall see you all soon. Thank you. Bye.